Rizlon available wherever cars are serviced. Tonight, our special edition, Inside Red China, its people, its problems, its policies, its leaders, and their policies. The man who's waiting by telephone to make the report is just back from there. He's Philip Harrington, photographer for Look Magazine, who defied an American State Department ban and went to Red China to bring back the story on Inside Red China, the full details of which you can read in the new issue of Look Magazine on your newsstand now. Tonight for us on radio, a summary and preview of what he found inside Red China. Philip Harrington, first question. When did you get your assignment to go to Bamboo Land, and what was your reaction when you got it? Well, the assignment came through last fall. I had been in, in Russia for about two months and came back to the States and discovered that I was going to go back to China. Uh, I think that I was selected for the assignment because I had spent a great deal of time in Russia and... and uh, was uh, vaguely acquainted with what was happening in that part of the world. Since you've been in both countries, I think our first question of a political sort will be, how much do you believe Red China is dominated by Russian communism? Uh, I, I feel that it's dominated completely uh, politically, but I'm not sure that it's dominated completely uh, culturally. I think the Chinese uh, tend to Western ways culturally, now, that's merely an abstract guess, but uh, I think it's true from what all the Chinese have told me. Do you mean they like rock and roll music? Uh, I had a few question me about it. I even had somebody ask me about Elvis Presley. I was a little embarrassed to give him an answer. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I said, that's just the passing phenomena in America. It doesn't seem to have passed very quickly. <laughs> Let's see, did you call on any of the red Chinese leaders, Mao Zedong or Zhou Enlai? Uh, we called on Cho and Lai. The premier. Yes. A uh, rather interesting interview we had with him. We drove to his home, uh, and he himself answered the door. I expected a servant and was quite surprised when he answered the door. Had he expected you? Yes. That was an arranged interview, an interview arranged by the Chinese Foreign Department. Do you think he was trying to prove he was democratic? <laughs> I think he's just basically a, a uh, socially kind of a nice guy. Uh, he spoke fluent English, uh, although our interview was con conducted in both Chinese and English. He's uh, referred to as a rather tricky customer. What do you think? I think that he's probably one of the sharpest in the world at the present time. I attended a number of cocktail parties and social functions that he was at, and uh, I would say that his personal magnet magnetism is, is perhaps as strong as that of... Uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, from what I've heard about Mr. Roosevelt. How firmly do you think the communist regime in China is in the saddle? Uh, I would say it's probably in the saddle extremely firmly and, and there to stay. Uh, the, uh, China, the average Chinese, uh, old peasant worker, construction worker, is apparently better off than he was before the uh, communists came in. Well, that leads us to living standards. Now, you've seen Russia and China. How would you compare them, and how would you compare Chinese living standards with those of Americans? Well, I'd first off say that, the, of course, the Chinese living standards are uh, so far below ours in America that there's practically no comparison. Uh, the uh, Chinese compared with the Russians, uh, the Russians come off rather badly. Uh, the average Russian has to work for months to gain enough money to buy a suit or a pair of shoes, while uh, the average Chinese workman uh, uh, finds that shoes and clothes and, and basic commodities are well within his income. Do you believe religion is dead in China? I would say it's all but dead. Uh, the Chinese uh, would like us to believe, uh, while I was there, that religion was flourishing, and we were taken to a few Catholic churches and so on that were still operating. But from what I could uh, gather, we're operating on a very, very limited basis and uh, with no financial support from anybody, except perhaps from the congregation. What do you believe is the chief problem of Red China now? Well, it's, it's a, quite an obvious problem. It's the problem of overpopulation. The uh, Chinese population is, is growing by leaps and bounds until it'll be, I think, a billion in the year... 2,000, or over a third of the Earth's population. Uh, I think that 
their immediate problem is to uh, get the uh, pop the overpopulation under control, some some method of uh, birth control, or they're going to have so many mouths to feed it'll sap the energy of the nation, just just keeping the people alive. We hear constant reports of so-called brainwashing and brutality by the regime. What evidence did you see of that? I suppose they didn't let you see much. Uh, that That's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, outwardly, the people seem quite happy. Um, I understand that when the communists took over, they eliminated vast portions of the population, in the millions, I've heard. But I, I doubt if the average uh, Chinese knows that that ever went on, just because of the limited communications. And of course, the government controls communications, so the people never found out about it. Uh, as far as brutality, uh, I think it's perhaps far less than it is in Russia, or you wouldn't see so many smiling faces among the people. You find them that happy? Oh, yes, indeed. A great sense of humor, and uh, never never had a Chinese uh, get ugly with me while I was there. Do they seem to bear an innate hostility toward Americans, or do you think there's... Oh, uh, they're, they're surprisingly friendly. A uh, great number of the uh, Chinese uh, intellectuals and government leaders that I spoke to had been educated in the States, either at New York University or some of the other big schools. And they showed a great interest in America and everything American. Some of them asked me what plays are on Broadway now. and uh, We were quite surprised at the interest shown in America uh, by the Chinese. Do you believe the bad relations between the two countries ever can be reconciled and brought back to more normal relations? Well, I'm not sure they ever will be. I, I think they should. Uh, it's, it's almost uh, criminal to think that we can go through the next few generations ignoring the existence of one of the largest nations in the world. Thank you, Philip Harrington, for giving our 615 audience your story on Inside Red China. Philip Harrington, one of three newsmen who defied the American State Department and went to Red China. The complete details on his story you can find in the issue of Look magazine that's at your newsstand now. Just a word, Jamaica Belmont Racetrack, one of our new sponsors, we've had to drop tonight because of this special report. My apologies to you. And that's the 615 News Extra, John Wingate reporting.